Welcome to the A Minute to Midnight show folks, uh, this is Tony coming to you from New Zealand and I have today um, on Skype on the line with me Brooke Ardwin, my very good friend in Louisiana and uh, it's raining over there so hopefully our reception will well not be too bad because it's been in and out a little bit. So welcome Brooke, it's great we haven't been doing a show together for ages so it's really good to be doing it. Yeah, it's good to be here, Tony. Good to be back and not seeing everybody because, of course, I'm going to see everybody, but just knowing that, um, you know, all our friends are out there in the cyber world, it, it's good to be here. And, and hopefully, sorry about the uh, any technical interruptions. I, if I'm right, we're either having a, a like there's a tropical depression or storm or, or something. I actually posted about it, but I didn't even know about it until a few minutes ago. And I was wondering why it was raining so much over here. So I guess I need to be more in tune with the weather. Yeah, well, that's the way it goes, I suppose, at times. You guys certainly get hit by plenty of them, having spent time with you over there. Your storms are are way worse than anything I've ever experienced in New Zealand. So, Yes, but aren't they great when you record the sound quality of thunder and stuff? (laughs) <laughs> totally, you've got some amazing <laughs> recordings of it. So, um, yeah, we're a few days out from Halloween and the whole occult time of year, and so I thought it was a a good time to really to bring some focus on why all that's not good, and the involvement in the occult is growing so much, and especially amongst the young people that just been indoctrinated with it from day one. I think it was bad when we were younger, but it's so much worse now. And you've got some experiences to relay, I think, Brooke, from when you were younger and 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 some other stuff that we've got to bring in the show today. So, folks, hopefully um, this will be a good one to share with anybody that you know who may be involved in any of this type of thing because it is dangerous. Yes, it is very dangerous. Uh, first, I'm just going to... I'm going to tell a quick story um, about my experience uh, with the occult when I was a young teenager. And um, a lot of you people will be able to relate because you have teenagers. Don't ever presume um, that they're not doing something they shouldn't as far as what they're watching, what they're hearing. Um, We have to be so careful. And at the time, of course, um, my grandparents who I grew up with, they had no idea what I was doing, um, dabbling in the occult. No idea. You know, they never asked me what I was listening to or monitored anything I listened to. So I was kind of free to do what I wanted. Of course, I took advantage of that because they did trust me. I seemed like such a good little girl. And um, I was just doing things that I shouldn't have. And, you know, a lot of people when it comes to music, I just want to stress that. It, it it does get frustrating because I hear so many people say, well, you know, we're not really listening to the words or, or they're not really listening to the words or uh, people today, even Christians will put their children in the car and turn on secular music. And uh, one time I had a friend who loved Katy Perry and, you know, played her music all the time and let her kids listen to the music and, and doing the research and, And really digging into, you know, you have to really do the research. You have to know what's going on. If you don't know what's going on, sure, you can listen to some of those songs and think, well, that's really innocent. But actually, it's not. And and that's the whole purpose of it is to to really be deceiving. So you have to be the guardian of your children's souls. You know, what goes into their ears and, and, and their mind, their will, their emotion, the mind is so powerful and Satan works so strongly against the mind. And that is where this story really takes a turn for the worse. Um, and what happened to me, it, it's, it's mainly concerning the mind. Now I wasn't saved. I attended a private Catholic school. So all the more, of course I had open doors for the enemy to come in, but, um, being Catholic, I wasn't, you know, totally ignorant of, who Jesus was and the Lord. And I did go to church and, you know, I said prayers. I wasn't a very <laughs> uh, faithful Catholic, but I did love God and and I did somewhat serve him. Let's just put it that way. But I wasn't saved. But in listening 
uh, we w- let me start by saying uh, we were about uh, freshman year, I guess, about 14, going on 15 or right at 15. Uh, me and a group of friends, we, we just started dabbling in uh, occult symbology of all the satanic symbols that are out there. We draw them on our hands and we draw them on our legs and we make tattoos and we draw them all over our composition books. And we just thought they were so cool, you know. When it came to God, there was a cross. When it came to the enemy, oh, there was loads of all these, quote, cool symbols. So not even knowing what we were doing, we would draw these all over the place. Well, drawing them on books, paper, whatnot, suddenly turned into drawing them all over my blue jeans. Uh, You know, we'd rip our blue jeans apart back then. That's when that all started. Now, you can buy them already with holes in them. But uh, we'd rip them apart and write certain bands. Uh, The names of musicians or bands that we knew weren't good at all. I'm not talking about light stuff. And um, and we thought it was so cool. And I had a closet full of it, a closet full of black, um, uh, you know, black shirts, black shirts, black, black everything. And I... I'm so not proud to say back then that I absolutely loved the band Motley Crue. And I and I mean loved them. And I'd already heard and know, knew most of their music. So what happened next really came as a big surprise to me when one day I started singing one of their songs just, just in my mind. Um, and unfortunately, the name of the song is Shout at the Devil. And it is glorifying Satan. And to this day, even right now, I can quote that song nearly word for word. And every now and then it pops up in my mind and I, I get so frustrated with myself because I know it that well. And this was when I was set like 14, 15, I said 15. Anyway, I start singing this song to myself like we always do. Sometimes the song gets stuck in our minds. Notice that also there is reasons why certain music is stuck in our minds. And a lot of times we don't like the song. We don't want it to. There's secular music out there, you guys, that I don't ever put on the radio, ever. I don't ever, I hardly ever listen to any music because I'm always listening to messages. And somehow I can sing you nearly the whole song on all these all these different songs that are out right now on the radio. And it's just by merely going to grocery stores or going shopping somewhere and hearing it out there in the air. And I can sing along with it. And I am so perplexed. Like how in the world do I know this song from top to bottom when I have no idea who sings it. I don't know the name of it. And I've never heard it before, but that's how it is. That's the power of music that's the power of words spoken out remember music is words spoken out and of course the lord you know teaches us the power and authority of our words when we use his word what do you think the enemy is going to do when it's glorifying the kingdom of darkness it's the same thing so i i had that song stuck in my mind and the next thing i know uh, as days went by it became worse and it, I started singing it in, in my thought or, you know, out loud, whatever, um, many times a day. Didn't think nothing of it at first. A few days went by. I started writing the lyrics down in a composition in my class time and not paying attention to my classes, my teachers or anything, which, I mean, it wasn't that uncommon for me to do back then, but writing it, writing it, writing it. I'd get home, I would start writing this song again in a composition. And I mean, I really thought, I mean, I'm crazy. What is, what's going on? I started to think that. Why am I doing this? Now, in the meantime, uh, one day I was at school, high school, remember, and there's a restroom with a bunch of lockers in it for girls. And me and my friends were, I don't know, messing around in there. I don't know if we had left class early or what we were doing in there. And we were just running around the benches on there. And I said, 
um, hey, guys, oh, you know the Our Father? We can take the Our Father and turn it into, instead of Our Father who art in heaven, it's Our Father who art in hell. Hallowed be your name. And I, I proceeded to take the Our Father and make it into a prayer instead of for God, to God, to the Lord, to the enemy, to Satan. Now, I'm almost not even believing my own ears because I was never one to do that. Yes, I thought it was all cool, but understand, I didn't know. I didn't even understand what I was doing. Uh, like most kids, people just do it because kids do it thinking it's cool. I didn't know the power behind it. And I was really ashamed of that, but I did it anyway. And I told my friends about it anyway. And not one of them said anything like you shouldn't be doing that or why are you doing that? Everybody laughed about it. Uh, same thing pre proceeded to happen with the, the song Shout at the Devil. It just got worse. And I was just writing it constantly, singing it constantly, and glorifying the enemy through that song constantly. And I went to bed one night and I laid down. And I'll never forget. It's like it was yesterday. I... I laid on my left side, on the right side of the bed, because that was, you know, my side of the bed. And I was not asleep yet, but I was getting to the point where I knew I would soon fall asleep. And as I lay there, I'm on my, like I said, my left side. So my right shoulder is uh, facing the ceiling. And all of a sudden, I... I felt what I knew, no doubt knew, was someone put a hand on my shoulder. And in that second that I felt that touch and I felt the warmth, there was a, there was a warmth there. It was a different temperature than the room. I became horrified. Um, to where I was, my heart started pounding. I thought I was going to have a panic attack. End up later, I did have a panic. I was just so scared. Because even though I didn't know what was happening, I knew it wasn't good. Something inside of me told me it was not good. And I knew it was like a physical being or a person or something touching me. And I was too afraid to look. I was trying to do everything not to turn around because I felt that it was hovering over me, that if I just turned my head to the right and looked up, I would see whatever this was touching me. And finally, I decided to do it. I got enough courage and I started turning my head to the right. And I first came up, my eyes first saw the hand and it was a hand and it was terrible you know it's it's like you know you would think especially at that age you know what a quote you know demon evil force whatever it was would look like uh you know it wasn't skin colored it was all bumpy and green and black and dark and it had long long nails just the nails were disgusting and long and at the not long after i looked at the hand that's when I decided to look up in, at his face to see what was looking at me. And I looked up. And when I looked up and I had eye contact with this entity, this being, this demon, I physically did <gasps> because it was so horrifying. And when I when I gasped, I have never felt so much fear, but I, I jumped out the bed at the same time as I gasped because I didn't know what else to do. And I started literally yelling, not to the point where I woke up my grandparents because this was at night. They were asleep. But I started yelling, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And I started crying. I was panicking. I was shaking. I was a total disaster. And it immediately went away when I gasped and I jumped up and I said, Jesus, all at the same time. So it was gone. 
but what I realized in that, and thank God for that, because I didn't know anything about speaking out the name of Jesus against spirits. Uh, you know, I knew nothing about spirits. I, for all I knew, they weren't real. We never really talked about them back then. Uh, yes, we, I believed in Satan, but it just, you know, being a young teenager and in Catholic church, you, you don't do a lot of discussions about that stuff. So I was really thankful that it went away and what it what it all actually did was quote unquote it scared the hell out of me <laughs> from that day on i i mean i started getting rid of stuff in my closet i quit listening to motley crew after that i stopped singing the song in my head i stopped writing it it was all gone everything i had been fighting with that song for a few weeks because well about a week and a half it lasted it was just all gone, everything, once I saw what I saw. And I never had an experience like it again. I never, um, but I didn't put myself in positions after that. I was very cautious as to what I listened to after that. Uh, I didn't just trust everything anymore. But I also didn't tell anyone. I did not tell a friend. I didn't tell my grandma. I didn't tell anybody. I thought while I was in my room, freaking out, horrified, if I, I wanted to go wake them up because I was that terrified. I didn't want to be alone. But I thought if I went to wake my grandparents up and told them what I just saw and explained to them, they would absolutely thought I had fallen out the bed, hit my head, and I was dreaming, you know? You know, can I? I'm. I think I'm just going to now relay because that's really interesting, and and I'm going to share experiences of mine uh, as well, which will also relate to what you've just said. First off, I want to say, you know, people that follow a minute to midnight would know that I'm I'm a musician. You know, all the music is used in the shows I've written and played and recorded, and I've been a musician all my life. Um, when I was a, a kid. I, I was probably two or three years old, I think three actually, I had the scariest dream of my life, which I still remember to this day, um, and it might not seem like much, and this was go this was in the 60s, where, where I don't even remember if we had television at that point, because I was too young, we may have done, but certainly my parents never watched much at, at that point, it was only one channel in New Zealand anyway. And um, I knew nothing about Dracula or demons or the devil or any of that kind of stuff at that point. But I had a dream where I was in this dream in a massive like cathedral type place. And there was this vampire type figure, like the devil, basically Satan in black playing an enormous pipe organ and the scary music. And I was being drawn to it like this force was drawing me towards it. And I remember absolutely the most terror that to me that was the most scariest dream I had in my life. And I woke up um, from that, and, and I think it's probably the only time in my life I actually went to my parents and slept in their in their bed. You know, um, and that might not seem like a huge thing, but the, it, it to me because I'd never seen Dracula or knew any of that stuff or pipe organs or any of that thing, and then. Just not that long ago, you know, I, I saw um, a, a video of the Phantom of the Opera and I thought, my gosh, the type of music and the way that they portrayed it, it was pretty much exactly what I saw in my dream back in the, in the 60s, you know. So music is powerful. And then I want to fast forward, like later, I... I kind of got real interested. I was like you, Brooke, I was a Catholic and I had a heart for God in many ways, but was not walking with God, but always was conscious of it and all of that. But I sort of got real interested in a lot of occult stuff. And I I, I read all Dennis Wheatley's books. I got really into Dennis Wheatley's books, um, which are a lot, a lot of them were satanic books. Like there's one even called The Satanist and, and so on. And um, The Devil Rides Out and various things like that, and I was fascinated. I didn't become a Satanist, but I was fascinated by all that stuff. Now, I want to fast forward to, I was 16 going on 17, I maybe just turned 17 or towards the end of my six, 16. Uh, I was living at that point with an auntie and uncle, and 
my auntie was a qualified astrologer and different things, and a lot of weird things used to happen in that house. I won't go into all the details, but there were a lot of sort of demonic type things. But the scariest thing that ever happened, and I'm kind of cut the story short, there is more to it, but one night I was in bed asleep and I was woken up by being strangled. And you said you saw a hand brook and it was multicolored. The one I saw around my throat was white. It was mm-hmm. it was strangling me. I couldn't breathe. I sat up, put my hands, both hands under this hand to try and throw it off because I was suffocating, literally. And I couldn't. And, but in my mind, because like you, I knew the Lord's Prayer as a Catholic, you drummed, it gets drummed into you. So I began to pray the Lord's Prayer, Our Father who art in heaven, in my mind. As soon as I did that, I was able to get the my hands enough to push it off a little bit and then speak out loud. And then I said the only thing I knew from reading Dennis Wheatley books at the time, I said, avaunt thee Satan, because I remember that that, that apparently worked in those books. <laughs> and and then I, I used the name of Jesus. And as soon as I did that, I was actually able to throw this thing off. And I saw mm. the hand like fly through the air kind of thing. And then when it hit the bed, it disappeared. But it was like the darkest, most evilest feeling in the room, Um, like evil you could have cut with a knife. And I honestly believe I would have died had I not prayed. And then as soon Mm. as I did that, I I didn't have a Bible, but I did have a Dennis Wheatley book, and in it had Psalm 93, uh, not Psalm 23, sorry. And so I just ended up writing Psalm 23 out on a piece of paper and tacking it to my wall and speaking out loud and all this stuff just because I was terrified. It was literally the most scary thing in my life. Then uh, probably a few minutes later in the next room, my auntie and uncle um, had a similar experience, not with the being strangled around the neck, but my auntie was hauled out, like hauled out of the bed uh, no, hauled out of her body, sorry, and my uncle was grabbed by the arm and, and pulled out of bed by this thing, uh, like physically thrown out of the bed. So I could go into more and more detail, but the point is it absolutely brought home to me the reality of all this occult stuff I'd been interested in, and of course they were interested in that kind of stuff that none of us were Satanists or anything, but it was the most terrifying thing that ever happened to me and it really started me on the path of searching for 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 Jesus because I thought this is so real and I don't ever want to go through anything like that again um, because I, I truly believe I would have been one of those statistics that would have died in your sleep, you know, had, or supposedly died in your sleep even though I was sitting up had I not prayed at the time. And then I did have a lot of other experiences, including after I became a Christian, which I was probably about two years after that, um, with, well, just one experience. I went to an occult kind of group one night. I would have still been 17 or 18, not a Christian at this time, and a guy I worked with whose name was Clive, and he was part of this occult sort of group and he kept on saying to me oh I'm gaining all more and more knowledge esoteric knowledge and my head is starting to grow and and um all the stuff and and my name is uh I think he called himself Magnum from memory now and I thought this is really weird I never went to the group once but then I became a Christian or oh, maybe about a year after that and I think I was late 19 or maybe 20 and I saw this guy with his motorbike, same backpack, same clothes and everything. And I walked up and said, G'day, Clive. And this guy turned around and looked at me with this blank kind of look on his face. And his head had kind of changed shape, but it was like he said it was. And it was, but it was the same guy. And he said, my name's not Clive, I'm Max. And I freaked out. I could see the demons in the guy's eyes. I really could. And I was a, a brand new Christian. I didn't know how to deal with it. I just took off. I did find out later that he ended up be going and becoming part of the headquarters. He moved to England and became part of the headquarters of that cult at the time. But that to me was like, whoa, this stuff is all so, so real. 
this demonic. And that's just some experiences. There, there are more. I won't go into any more. But the point of the matter is this stuff is real. And the more you delve into it, the more you put yourself in danger of, well, it is, it's just a danger. And I would say avoid it. And if you've got kids or anyone that are involved in any of the stuff, and it's so much easier to become involved in it now than it was then, there's so much more of it today than what there was when you, Brooke, were growing up, or me as well. And um, it's hard for young people, but as parents, you really need to also, if you're a Christian listening to this, realize what your kids are getting into. And it's not playful, it's not harmless, it's serious life and death stuff. So, Brooke, yeah, yeah, it's serious business. What, what I wanted to say, you know, while listening to you and thinking about all these experiences, you just tapped into that. I guarantee you, I don't care how how you go into it, how non-threatening you think it is, eventually it will manifest itself. You will see what happens. You know, even if you go into it innocently, like myself, it's going, something's going to transpire eventually if you stay in that. And what else is really interesting that I realized when you were telling your story as well with how you, you know, as a Catholic, you knew the Lord's Prayer, so you said it. Uh, me, I just started saying Jesus, Jesus, and, you know, it went away immediately. But isn't that so interesting how n- neither of us were saved, knew anything, how to use the authority of the name of Jesus, understood um, the demonic and, and that realm and, and how we had authority but just what we did know, the little bit of God and Jesus we spoke, it was able to first save you and you were able to remove its hands. And secondly, whatever was over me went away. Now, my point is, imagine those of us now and us now, after having been saved and learning about the power of that name and what it can do, you know, when it does say uh just one of us can put a thousand to flight. Two of us can send the legions fleeing. I mean, we have to really understand the power of what's in that name of Jesus. Totally agree. Absolutely. And, you know, going back to those Dennis Wheatley books I used to read, I think, it was, I don't remember which one, but it was one of them because I read a few, um, you know, they'd ho- they'd put themselves in pentacles to stay safe, you know, from these evil forces and they'd draw a big pentagram on the ground with candles and stay on the inside and all mm. that to be safe from the supposedly evil forces. Well, folks, that doesn't work. It's a, a, a load of rubbish and neither does sprinkling Catholic holy water work. <laughs> right. You have to have a relationship with Jesus um, as the only surefire way of dealing with this stuff. But as right. you and I, Brooke, we weren't even saved at the point, and yet it was the name of Jesus, not having to say it in the Hebrew, whatever. We only knew Jesus. We didn't know Yeshua or anything else. And that right. powerful name of Jesus actually worked in your case, and it worked in my case. Amen. That's right. And it will always work for anyone. You know, that's all you've got to do. Listen, you don't have to turn into some world-renowned speaker and pray some, you know, extravagant, long, uh, you know, prayer, you just have to use the name Jesus and you got it. He's there for you. He's going to, he's going to deal with it. You know, of course, I don't suggest anybody to go and test it. You're not supposed to test God, you know, say, well, you know, I'm hearing this and I don't believe all that. So I'm going to go and see if I can see some demons tonight and use Jesus name to go and, you know, <laughs> pistol yeah. whip them back into hell and stuff. I mean, you know, good luck with that. But yeah. because I guarantee you when they do see or have an experience like you with that physical, that they'll never do it again. It's horrifying. It is. It No matter you, you may think that, OK, well, I'm, I'm I can deal with it. I'm, I'm all cool. I'm. No, it is absolutely horrifying. So I cannot imagine an eternity, you know, in a place like hell, uh, you know, 
10 seconds was enough for me to, to, to be around just that demonic presence that had manifested itself. But in, in talking about our own stories, I know you wanted to talk about a bit about the, you know, the explosion of occultism in, in America and, you know, and what's happening today. And one area I'll start with, and then uh, it, it's, you know, and I'm sure a lot of people know about this. This is one I actually didn't know about till recently. And I'm just mentioning it, mentioning it because it's almost Halloween. And a week before Halloween started, starts, which would be like today, technically, I do believe it's the 25th. So that's like seven days. 24th, I think it starts. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's when, you know, these, uh, President Trump's opponents, you know, they plan on gathering themselves to cast that spell against yeah. the administration. And, you know, this is happening. This has started since he was inaugurated, by the way. Yeah, you know, can I just been- I just want to jump in there because I want to carry on with this too. Folks, we're not saying this as either endorsers of Trump or anti-Trump. We're just talking about this from a purely witchcraft point of view. We're not saying yes. we support Trump and we're not saying we're anti-Trump. We're just anti the spirit that's going on here. Carry on, yeah. because I want to, yeah. yeah, this is a good thing to bring up. Okay, well, you know, like I said, this ritual has been, you know, performed since he was inaugurated, you know. And they see the recent uh, impeachment inquiry as as answers to their, quote, prayer. You know, they're yeah. cursing. They do. They see it. Uh, there's and and more and more people. It, it's it, this this whole ritual, this movement, what's going on? It has totally exploded. It's gone viral. Um, it did. It did back when when it was first started. Now, it was uh, started by a guy named Michael Hughes. Yeah. Just to let you guys know, if you yeah. see him or see the name, you know uh, where this is coming from. And I, I wrote a little bit down uh, more about it, other than just kind of knowing what it what it what it is. They uh, it's crafted to, and this is open quote, to bind Trump and all those who abet him, and th- and also. They what they tell you to do, because anybody can do it. You know, they have a whole Facebook group behind this and you can get on there and you can join this whole ritual movement. And you they do it um, at the first waning of the moon. I mean, you know, so this is done not just, you know, the week before Halloween. This is done all year round. And um, they tell you to get an, a, a bad picture of Trump. Uh, and. um a tarot, tarot card, card. Yeah. and an orange candle, yeah. a piece, a, a piece of the orange candle, and and carve his name in it, and then you're supposed to say the incantation, and then you burn, of course, you know, his picture in the box. Yeah, I just want to jump in there just for a minute, folks. Just look, the participants with this incantation, they call on the heavenly hosts, demons of the infernal realms and spirits of the ancestors to bind Trump so that, you know, he may fail. Yeah. Listen to that. They're actually saying they're calling on demons of the infernal realm, and yet these people claim to be doing good and stopping the Trump administration from doing bad, and yet they're quite happy to call on demons of the infernal realm. I mean, far out, folks. It's just yeah, nuts. Yeah, it's craziness. And, and, and they also, when they... Uh, uh, w- w- part of it, they say uh, they want to bind him so that his, uh, you know, his works, you know, will will fail. You know, it, it just everything he does will utterly fail. And the thing is, they're also calling upon wicked deities uh, in this curse to cause all his works to fail. But but don't feel left out. Any of you who are Trump supporters, they don't want you to feel like left out either. So they also include you in there. So if you're a Trump supporter, just know that, you know, the people doing this ritual and, uh, well, performing this ritual and, and teaching others about it, um, they include you as well. So 
this is what our world has come to. And, you know, as much as I have no problem saying I could not stand our last president, but one before Trump, I'll just leave it at that. I would never, ever think to take part in something so demonic, no matter how much I didn't like a president. You understand me? That is, and this thing is 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 getting massive. This is growing. It just goes to show you the level of maturity that the public is living in these days when 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 this is boasted about over this was written about in 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 one of the Washington newspapers yeah. for goodness sake i mean you understand me I, I i it's probably been on mainstream at least once you know cuz uh, it started what how when was he inaugurated with 3 years ago the yeah. over 3 yeah so I mean, the Washington Examiner already wrote about it. You know, they do interviews with uh, Michael Hughes. So anyway, we just have to be so careful. And, and then speaking of political, Tony, you know, in 2018, we saw where a covenant, and that wasn't that long ago. We were just talking last year. We're talking about, uh, there was a there was coven in Brooklyn and New York, witches. They were witches who publicly hexed that, that then Supreme Court candidate would Brett Kavanaugh, as well as thousands of people at home were doing these folk magic rituals and to bind Trump. And and they did this for, for months after the inauguration. So this one specific ritual that I just mentioned led by Michael Hughes, oh, it's far from the only one out there. And, and, you know, this, these things are, are starting all over the place. I Recently, I read, I don't know exactly when it happened, but not very long ago, one of the New York uh, U.S. representatives uh, gave a psychic her birth time. Now, I had no idea how that was important. Uh, you know, like, okay, what, what do they mean? And it was just that, <laughs> the time of her birth. And in doing so, they they can make all these readings about your life and and um and someone apparently a psychic tried to get um Hillary Clinton to give her birth time one uh one day when they were at a signing of her book and she never would actually give it and then she ended up lying about it so that goes to show me she obviously knew what was behind yeah. it you know, people that don't know what's behind that. If someone comes up to me and, and, you know, just seems innocently and says, hey, what's your birth date? And then goes on to say, what time were you born? I'm going to give that time, not even knowing the significance of what they do with it. But I'm just bringing this up, Tony, just to show uh, an example, examples of in the political arena, the witchcraft that is going on in this day and age. Well, you know, it's like really interesting this year uh, in May, the Satanic Temple earned wow. tax-exempt status in the US by the IRS. So you basically, the Satanic Temple is now um, a 501c3 or whatever it is, tax-exempt religion. And that, that was would have been unthinkable one point in time. And, and in uh, January of this year, Christian Bale, or whatever his name is, um, I think that's how you pronounce it, Bale, <laughs> I think of him as Bale, in his acceptance speech for his role in a movie called Vice, um, he actually hailed Satan as his, how did he put it? Um, yeah, basically as his inspiration. Anyway, uh -huh. so, uh, he, yeah, he gave thanks to Satan for inspiring his role in the film. I mean, far out. That's just like, and of course, the satanic um, church, Church of Satan, basically lauded him for having done that. It's it's insanity. And when we look at just, you know, there are so many occult streams, but just Wicca, for example, uh, from 1990 to 2008, Trinity College in Connecticut ran three large detailed religion surveys, and they showed that from 
8,000 Wiccans in 1990. By 2008, there were 340,000 Wiccans. That's how much that has exploded. Uh, They haven't done another one of those surveys since 2008, but the Pew Research picked up the baton. This is according to an article in QZ.com. So just to give you some numbers, by 2014, speaking of what you're speaking of, there was actually one million combined pagans and and Wiccans. So that that the explosion of Wicca, Wicca is the top growing, top growing quote religion in in this country. It's the top. I just uh, I know somebody. I know a girl I met her not long ago, and you know I you know, I just consider you know an acquaintance, a friend, and. I had no idea. I found out a few days later. I mean, she's a practicing Wicca. And it, it's like, is this everywhere you go these days? I mean, you hardly heard about it back in, you know, late high school or, and in college. I didn't meet many. But nowadays, it, it's everywhere. I mean, the chances are these days, uh, especially when it comes to millennials, you know, there's a much greater percentage that they are going to fall into some occultic practice than walk into a church. Mm. That's just bottom line. Mm. I mean, and that's that's the times we're living in. I mean, we know uh, makeup industry, that's a multi-billion dollar industry. And, I mean, just last year, the, the I don't know if people remember this, but the, the makeup chain Sephora, I mean, it sold a $42 starter witch kit. Wow. It's a little makeup kit. Now, do you? And it also came with white sage and tarot cards. Now, you imagine the little girls across the world. Makeup is their thing, right? I mean, we start at a young age, either wanting to play makeup, play with our mama's makeup. And here Sephora was selling their starter witch kit with their tarot cards and their sage and all of this. And look, hey. That's just fine and dandy. It's 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 become you know being quote a witch or witchcraft is it's they make it so mainstream and like it's just okay, and it's not okay. I mean, you I don't see it going on ar- around here, but I've seen plenty of TV and walking by it even there's a movie star or two or a musician and they're you know they have their sage burning and they walk they. Passing it around their kid, around somebody they know, getting rid of the negative energy, blah, blah, blah. And and it's just all over the place. So it's not dying down, Tony. It is only getting worse, and we can only expect this to increase and increase and increase as the last days continue to to pass forward, you know? It, it's just going to get worse. Yeah. Now, okay. So, as we look, you know, towards the end of this show here, now, how about Brooke? Can you give our listeners your thoughts on how to avoid this or what to do, and then, and then maybe let's just pray um, for those listening. First of all, we have to have discernment, Tony. I mean, that's number one. We have to be prayed up, and we have to be studying our word, have the word in our hearts, because you know what, people. Our spirit bears witness with God's spirit. And we know when we are around something that's good, pure, holy, and we are going to know when there is something not right. Your spirit is going to tell you that. But, you know, we have to stay in communion with God. And um, I have been posting uh, the last few days every day. You know, um, every morning on, on, on the Fire and Freedom Group saying, you know, hey, did everybody pray this morning? And, and it, just the importance of starting our day with prayer, Tony, because it just determines the whole day. And we just know the fruits of it. We know people by their fruits. Stay away and avoid it. Don't feel like you have to stay at that home that you feel that something is going on or something is wrong. If you, you know, you have a supper with friends Excuse yourself politely and get out of there. Do not be your child's best friend, parents. They have enough friends. You have got to be their guardian. You've got to be their protector. Ultimately, our children are not our own. 
they belong to God. He has trusted us with them. And listen, there comes a time. It doesn't matter if they get angry with you. They will be okay. Take away the certain music. Take away the iPod. Take away the phone. If if they're listening to things that really open up the doors into witchcraft, into their lives. They will thank you later. And again, if they don't, if they get mad, so what? Let them get angry with you. They will be okay by the next day or the day after. No big deal. So, Tony, would you like to add anything to that? Yeah, I would, actually, because you, what you just re- said reminded me of something I've said to several people lately. The importance of actually reading the word for yourself. I think probably... You know, I would have gone off the rails way worse than I have at times in my life if I hadn't kept reading the word consistently. Like you need to do it daily. Uh, Don't trust somebody else to teach you what's in the Bible and not read it for yourself. Get in and study it because if people don't, then sooner or later you they're either going to fall away. This is what I've seen. People that don't read the Bible regularly for themselves, they either fall away from the faith and from Christianity entirely, or they get into some sort of heretical teaching or cultish pseudo-Christian thing because they haven't actually got themselves grounded in the word. So that's what I would say is challenge people. Just even if you don't feel like it, and even if you only do it a few minutes a day, do what Brooke said and start off the day by reading the word and prayer. And um, and I think that's vitally important. Otherwise, people are not going to, survive the growing darkness that's coming on the world. So that's all I want to add. So, Brooke, yeah, maybe do you want to um, to pray? Sure, I can do that. Lord, I just lift up our audience today and everyone who listens to this message, Father God. I pray that you would bless each and every one of them. Father, in this upcoming Halloween time, let us turn our backs to darkness, to evil, that er- to everything that is unholy, unpure, and not of you, Lord. And let us turn our hearts to that which is holy, that which is pure. Let us run to those things. Let us be holy like you are holy, Lord. I lift up our children, Father God. May you protect our children from the deeds of the darkness. May they not swerve to the left or to the right but follow the straight and narrow unto the kingdom of heaven. Lord God, I pray that you would give us all a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you. Lord, may we see others like you see us. May we love our enemy. May we do good to those who hurt us or persecute us. And Lord, above all, give us a desire to read your word, to study it, to show ourselves approved. May we start our our day with you and end our day with you. And Lord, may we be committed and diligent into praying every single day, not just every now and then. And I just, I thank you for the Minute to Midnight show. I thank you that you have all the glory through this ministry and we give you all praise honor and glory now and forever amen amen yeah that was powerful now brooke you um could tell the listeners you have the fire and freedom as well as you're part of the minute to midnight like moderator on the facebook group and so on you've also got fire and freedom do you want to tell the listeners about that oh well i mean uh i have a facebook group just like the Minute to Midnight Facebook group, private group, uh, you can find it by typing in Fire and Freedom on Facebook and um, um, you, uh, website, fireandfreedom.org. Uh, I'm just really starting to write articles again, Tony, and I have a video I'll be putting out next week. Um, but, yeah, come and visit. We have a great, great group of uh godly wonderful people um who love the lord and love to pray for you and um are just there to encourage and and build people up yeah that's awesome and folks don't forget um to visit a minute to midnight.com as well 
and um, all of our shows, the Minute to Midnight shows, are found on YouTube, on iTunes, and on a Minute to Midnight's website. And a hundred percent donations run as a Minute to Midnight, so we really appreciate it when people donate to a Minute to Midnight, and it also helps to, you know, be able to that I can help Brock out a little bit as well at times. Um, so. It's been a bit slow with donations lately, folks, so we really do appreciate it when people help us. Uh, We couldn't keep this running without your help. And also all the music um, is written, played and recorded by me that's used in the show. And um, there's a really good article, Brooke, that you wrote on the A Minute to Midnight website about how to get saved. And people can access that uh, easily on the A Minute to Midnight website. It's really good and I often send people there. So if people don't know the Lord, then that's a good place to start. Um, I, I feel like this has been really um, important, this show, Brooke, and I'm just so grateful that you've come on and shared what you have today. Well, thank you so much for inviting me, and we can not wait so long next time, right, to get mm. together. It's been way far yeah. too long, far yeah. too long, but I have a new laptop now, and technology wise it's going better so um and you know i'm feeling better i went through some some really rough times as most people know this last year uh, actually but um you know standing up wiping the dust off and moving forward right yeah totally and um yeah we're still always in very pretty much regular contact even though we haven't done a show together in in ages but i think it's been important that we've done it today and i just want to say thank you and, um, and thank you to all those listening. Um, we really do appreciate the audience. Don't forget also to, to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow our A Minute to Midnight website. Um, I still get people telling me that YouTube's been unsubscribing them from our channel. So just check if you have been subscribed in the past, check that you still are. And if you haven't, just click that subscribe button. So thanks again, Brooke. It's been an awesome discussion. Yes, thanks. And bye, everybody. Love y'all.